Hi. Welcome to The Coaching Game. I am Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Lars Newman. Lars, I am so thrilled to have you here, especially since I kept giving him the wrong time. It's like, oh, show up now. It's like, so he figured it out. So thank heavens. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Let me you made it. You. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you how I um, came to know about Lars. Um, uh, Dorota Ranazuski, Ranazus, Ranazuska, I always screw up her name, um, did, did put together her amazing skills as a coach and a photographer and came up with the first time ever a symposium on uh, coaching, photography and coaching. And Lars was one of the presenters. And I went, oh, my gosh, what is he talking about? That sounds so exciting. So I I, I bequested and asked him to please come on and, and tell us about um, what he's doing with photography, which I think is pretty innovative. So, Lars, tell me first, how did you I'm assuming that photography came before um, coaching, but I'm, I could be wrong. How did you get into photography? Yes. First, uh, Laurie, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I jump right into the question. And um, yeah, I, my father is a photographer. That's the short uh -huh. answer. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I just originally didn't want to be a photographer, but I grew up in photography and my father was it. So I, I was one too. What? Thank heavens, because I, I I looked at his website. I do not read German, but the pictures are exquisite, just exquisite. And um, so I'm so glad I'm so glad that you were born into the profession. So when did coaching come along for you? This was uh, the year was I would say 2010, but uh, it came along with the. Um, with a search i was searching for something I, I didn't know what i was searching for in photography because i learned photography as a profession here in germany mm -hmm. and uh, there was something missing and i i didn't know what was missing i had i knew how to construct photos how to construct right photos right passport photos or application photos but there was something missing and when I started to ask people questions about them, I had so many ideas, but I didn't know how to turn them into pictures. And I didn't know if I am allowed to ask those private questions. So I stopped and I, I noticed that I need more tools for that, for asking and for being curious. So that way, coaching oh came into my life. That's amazing. Tell me, did you do you remember what other avenues you pursued before you got to coaching I think that's fascinating that you ended up on coaching do you, do you mm. remember some of the other things that you said oh maybe that and it was like no nah, that doesn't work do, yeah. what else did you try many many <laughs> avenues yes so yeah. we I learned traditionally so have a studio and go into the chemical dark room in those days 1989 it started so and then we we thought we needed a shop then we thought we needed branches then we thought we needed to develop uh, pictures, th so the films, the chemical films, uh, in one hour, you know, perhaps you still know these old shops where I could develop uh, photos in one hour. And <laughs> the one hour we thought, photo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we, we had to go to the big city, we thought, and... Uh, we thought we had to do everything in photography from weddings and people and for, I don't know, application, passport, families, everything. And everything of that didn't work out for me. Everything. So it cost so much, but it didn't work out for me. So. So what, what, what made coaching the one? What, what, what made you say, ah, oh, this is fine. What I'm looking for. Laurie, this, <laughs> this is an interesting question because I, <laughs> I just don't know. I think it's, it's how I, how I am or who I am. Right. Um, I think I, I I was born as a coach, so to speak. I'm so curious about people. and But I haven't known when I, when I started the profession with 16 years. So I have known that I am a coach, a natural coach. I have to know people. I feel a lot when they come to me. I feel when they are happy or not happy. But um, I think... I had to discover it uh, through a journey what I don't want to do. 
So finally, I found, so eventually I found out uh, what I want to do. And that was coaching and yeah, combining it with photography. So the profession I already knew, this was a kind of an adventure from 2010 on. But yeah, something developed from that. Let me tell you, Lars, that is an international story because everyone that I know, and I know a lot of coaches, um, we all went around saying, there's got to be something more. And we were from all professions and it was just like, something is missing. And then when we finally discovered coaching, it was like, oh, I've been doing that all along. It's like, you mean that's a profession? I can, I can get paid for this? Wow. <laughs> so that is not just unique to you and, and your location. It's I, As far as I know, it's all over the world. It's like, oh, this is something that I know I've been doing and I know I could do. So, so on your website, again, it says that um, you invented personality photography what how did you do that and and what is it <laughs> yes um it's more yeah a combination of being more curious than i thought i am allowed to uh -huh. <laughs> in photography so to ask seemingly private question but when i have a sense of there's something missing here there's something not outspoken here i have to ask so Adding this to photography, to portrait photography, business photography, and application photos uh, makes them much more rich. So I, I know people's values, and then I can bring them into the, the, the motif, into the, the idea of the picture. And this was a gradual way, I would say. This was not made on one day. But what I noticed was um, there must be a name for that. I can't, I can't call it business photography. I can't call it um, application photography because people know those boxes. Mm -hmm. And my photography didn't, I, I noticed it didn't fit into a box. So there had to be a new name for that. And personality photography came, came wow. out of my mind. Hallelujah for out of the box. Yeah. So so how does that work? Do you do you set up a session with the person prior to um mm. the photography or do you ask as you're taking pictures or or do you have a method or does it just organically happen when when you meet the person? Yes. Um in the first years it was sometimes they came had had their appointment. And I just asked more question. I just was more curious. With that came the problem how to price that. Ah. Because it, <laughs> I couldn't do it for 70 euros anymore. So in those days. Uh, and fast forward to today. Um, it is now it has developed to a whole program. And I call that program today the image distillery. So the... Um, personality photography is a part of the image distillery so image i say image distillery on purpose because it has two meanings in english and in in german too so a self image the mental self image but also a picture just a photo or a picture and this is what i do so i i um try to um, bring the picture the 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 their unconscious picture to consciousness in their in their mind what we do in coaching their self picture but then i take the camera and try to try to make it um yeah metaphor a photographic metaphor for that oh, and I then we take the picture and then we discuss the picture and it's really really interesting what has happened over the photo shoot there always something is happening. There's always something by chance or not planned, but you can see so many things. And when people discuss their own photographer, uh, their own photography or their own photos, then they discover so many little things about themselves or huge things they haven't thought of. And yeah, that's why they brought their body into motion and then they see themselves much better. Good gosh, do you do this in one session or many sessions? No, today it's, I would say, at least three, if not five sessions. Oh, oh good. Because yeah, yeah. I was going to say, if you leave them wondering about or, or discovering all these insights, it's like, where do they go? So they go to you, which is great. And mm -hmm. what, what did you find 
is different about the photos that you were taking and then when you added coaching what 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 do you find are the major differences in those photographs what a good question what yeah. a good question because um i guess some outsiders some some strangers so to speak who look at the photos may or may not uh, don't see a different don't see a difference wouldn't see a difference mm -hmm. but what the owner of the picture and me what we what the difference for us is we feel so different we feel so different it feels so strong to to be portrait in your strong environment in your um gestures in your with your partners but not with customers you don't like so um i give you an example I had a coach, also a coach, a colleague of us, and he wanted to just to move into a new office. And he created a beautiful office with design furniture and everything. And he thought because everyone does it, he had to have a picture in his new design chair. And when I uh, talked to him, I noticed, yes, he's a, he's a beautiful man and the design chair, everything's okay, but that's not what he is. Because he always uh, talked about, he no, didn't notice, but he talked about uh, getting up very early, then um, being there for his three children, then going out. And if it's winter or summer, going out, it's minus degrees. And no matter what, he, he goes out under the trees and meditates. So it felt like... Um, he would push people upon a rock or upon the Rocky Mountains or some, something. He felt really strong. So I had a picture in my mind, and this is what happens with me, that I see in a pictures then. The longer I talk to people, I see in a pictures. Ah. And I saw an in, in a picture of him walking through a creek. So it was in the morning. I saw morning. I saw the steam coming out of his mouth. I saw him walking through um, yeah, a cold creek. But in his suit, he had to, I don't know how to say the the uh, the trousers bringing a little bit up and walking. And this is exactly what we did. So he was so uh, excited about this, but he couldn't imagine this kind of uh, motif, this kind of imagery. But uh, yes, we went to a creek. It was uh, by accident or by incident. It was just beneath his house. So... Uh, yes, but besides his house, we just had to go to his house, to the creek, just uh, besides that, in the morning, 7 a.m., and uh, then we had uh, the, the this feeling of a man who um, pushes himself over limits and who does the extra mile all the time. So this is one, and in the suit, he is beautiful too, in this creek. So I think this is an image um, that shows who he is really much more than the picture we would have taken in the design chair like every coach has. And you didn't bring the designer chair to the creek. Good for you. Oh, How courageous. No. What, a, what, a, what a masterful view. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, that brings up a question to me because I believe you do work with mostly executives and business people. Is that right? Or is it, is it, yes. is it broader scope? Yeah. It's the business often, owners, business owners, yes. Business owners, okay. How business on owners. earth do you convince them, hey, this is the way we want to go here. We want to go to the creek. How how do you do that? I don't have to con convince them. It's really interesting because uh, because of the, the coaching part. The first part is the coaching part. So I listen, I ask questions, and we, yeah, we mm, get more conscious about their goals they often know, don't know their goals. We all know it as coaches. So they get more conscious about their goals, about their, their resources. Mm -hmm. And when a picture comes up that shows all this, that shows this world, that is a metaphor for this world, then they are excited all the time. I I can certainly see why. I, but And I think it's courageous on their part also, because we all mm -hmm. know the profile picture where your head's supposed to be turned and you have to have a background that looks professional. And then you have a creek and it's like, OK, that, that's just amazing, Lars, that you can get yeah. people to do that. What other kind of photography do you indulge in? Um, 
is is that it? I mean, which is far more than enough. Is, is are there any other? Because what I see on your your website is beautiful landscapes that are just like, oh my God, wherever it is, I want to be there. Um, what else do you do with photography? Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do oh, okay. this uh, this is my my main work this um, image distillery so including the personality photography part but what I do sometimes is mm, I don't dare to say it's a paid hobby but it's kind of it's kind of a paid hobby I'm a fan of uh, railways and I love uh, landscapes and railways and la railways and landscapes. So I have uh, the um, the bliss to have a customer here. This is the railway and the uh, and public transport network here in our area. And they are a customer of mine. And for them, I just have uh, sometimes the, uh, the honor to photograph uh, locomotives or landscapes. And we have a beautiful landscape here. So this is my... Uh, paid hobby so to speak but not to underrate that <laughs> no don't underrate it and and it seems like you're almost a hesitant to go oh I love it so much maybe I'd, I shouldn't be paid for it because I was thinking there's about four that I would like to reproduce and put on my walls here they are so gorgeous so uh, keep doing that whatever you're doing because yeah, they, they are wonderful <laughs> uh and and it's it shows your versatility of course and, and that's probably how you ended up at the creek because you enjoy the landscape part so yes. uh, you can too yes you know, what, you've done, what you've done is kind of what Dorota did is like take all my skills and I'm going to put them all together and come up with this wild new crazy thing, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. I, I understand that you're talking about a retreat. What, what kind of retreat is that and who's it for and when's it going to happen and all the all the questions. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking, Laurie. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have a, a concrete um, date now. When we do it, um, the idea of the retreat is um, based on hmm, based on I see so many business owners in the box, so quite um, not so happy in the box of their of their industry. There are so often their business model is a copy of the industry standards, but um, they don't fit into the box anymore. So, and there are so many um, business owners who are not happy with their program, with their articles, with their pricing and, and with their branding, positioning, but they don't know what's wrong. They don't know, have the idea what, to, they tried out so many different things to correct something. And often it's quite, quite simply the fact that they don't fit into the industry box, that's it. So the question is, what, what else? What could be my signature business model? So, and the retreat is just about offering a place for, for yeah, a trusted place for talking about that, for, for talking about what it was like for the last years to be in the box, not to know how to change, what to change, and to see, yes, I want to do something different, but I don't know what, and to exchange and yeah, use photography to explore a little bit more about every single participant, what could be um, the first ideas for a signature business model. Now, this do is... they have to be photographers or are you going to take care of no, that? No, uh -huh. I will take, take care of that. We will use uh, uh, mobile phones. We, we call it handy in, in Germany. We will use the handies. So <laughs> and we like use that. the mobile phones. It's it's quite enough. It's, it's not about the, 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 the quality of photography. You know it from Dorota already. It's more about what reflects what is reflected in the photo so we will perhaps take a photo walk um this will we will see what happens in the retreat so we will use photography just to explore ourselves a little bit more amazing mm -hmm. yeah because everybody today with the handy i love that i love that term uh is a photographer you know and sometimes to the extreme <laughs> but it's okay as long as that's what you want if you mm -hmm. want to reflect your breakfast it's all right <laughs> it must be <laughs> something to you um but it 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 must be um fascinating to have someone guide you on that on that tour i assume the location will be in germany somewhere uh, no, I'm I'm thinking of Italy. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I love Italy. I love the uh, the the dimensions the there, the houses, and this is yeah. a good surrounding for having a quiet uh, in environment to be by yourself to, yeah, to connect to yourself. This is the the whole idea of the retreat to connect to yourself to reconnect wherever you are okay beautiful beautiful because you sort of touched on it let me ask you and we all went through the pandemic of course and um what when when you say that um executives are sometimes in the box or owners are sometimes in the box and they don't they the box is constricting and they want to get out but they don't know how what changes did you see as a result of the pandemic have people become more timid or have they become more like, oh, let's get the, let's get what we really want now because who knows what's going to happen next? Ha have you seen any changes in that? Have you seen improvements or declines or how did that affect your business? This is really interesting. Um, I would say it, it was a kind of uh, forced disruption for many people. So, um sometimes they didn't come to terms with it and sometimes they created something new with that it was different from from business to business i would say but sometimes yes it it was like a um, creative task so the old the old box wasn't there anymore so what do i do do i do now so and we saw here restaurants who opened their windows and just <laughs> there was an on spot uh, open the window restaurant it was beautiful to say they they brought brought up benches around the house so people could sit outside and just uh, enjoy the the, the um, boxes from the restaurant outside at, at the bench and uh, but others just closed the door so there were were many different approaches i would say I yeah I agree and, and that certainly happened here too. I I I'm a firm believer and God knows New York City suffered probably as as hard or if not more than anyone else. But there are many blessings that came from it and like you say sort of the box exploded, you know? Mm -hmm. and it's like, "Oh, what happened to my box and my boundaries and and what I should be doing?" And um which meant that people could retreat and that was fine, if, you know, whatever you needed to do. Or they could just say, "All right, uh, I'm free. Let me. How how creative can I get?" And and I'm I'm sure that happened over there too. So yeah, that that's good yes. to see that again. That was international also. What what's on what's on the horizon for you, Mr. Newman? It sounds like you're not a man who stands still and uh, says, "Okay, I've done that." What what would you besides the retreat, which sounds wonderful? Is it a one day retreat, a two day, a week, or are you still working that out? I'm still working it out and it feels like three days. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's not done in one day, so you have to uh, discuss it with the participants and uh, to, yeah, let it come in and um, discuss it again the next day and sit together in the evening is the best part always. So I think we should have three days at least. Yeah. Optimal, yeah. optimal. Yeah. So what, what else do you have planned going on here? My plan for this year is to um, be more precise in telling the world what I do. So because this is outside the box, I have the same problem or um, um, adventure, uh, adventure, <laughs> how you want to tell it, uh, tell us, um, to, to tell the world um, what I'm doing. So um, bringing bringing more precise language for the uh, distillery, for the image distillery, and to describe it. And yeah, this is a task for this year, I would say. It's it's enough. <laughs> yes, more than enough. And I'm so glad you're continuing and expanding. Do, do you have any plans on um, bringing in disciples, so to speak, people that you could teach this whole process to? Do you do that? You do this all by yourself. Yes, this is your... Yeah, I do it all by myself. Yeah. So... Now, I, good that you asked, there is something new. Uh, there is something <laughs> different that is new. Yes. And this is, I have to show you, I, I got a letter. This is called Steinbeis. We have the, the um, kind of academy, university academy here. And this year I opened the institute for 
um, with Steinbeis, together with Steinbeis. Um, this is on values and pictures. So the, the link between values and pictures. So to examine that topic much more, how are values mirrored in pictures and how to use it for your business. And we will have the first courses in this year about that for photographers. So offer to photographers. Yeah, and to that's agencies. new. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. This will this will be on, on the horizon for this year. I think it starts in the second quarter, I would say. And you will be you will be an instructor or a co-creator yes. or all of the yeah, I'm I'm the head and the instructor. So it starts little, but we we are Steinbeis in, in my back. And this is a, is a German wide institution with thousand, one thousand of Steinbeis um businesses. Mm -hmm. And now I am one of that with my institute. Yeah. Well, I am so intrigued by you, Lars, really. Tell me, do you do, um, your photography is one-on-one, -on -one, face to face is, is that unfortunately yes. the only way at this point? Okay, yeah, because, yes. um, yeah, I'd love to become a disciple and, and see what the heck you're doing and how you're doing it. How can um, people get in touch? How can, give them your website and how they can get in touch with you and, and all of that and and do if you have an email list, you know, I think people would love to follow what you do. I know I want to follow what you're doing. So I think other people would too. This is one of the things for this year to a be goal. more professional <laughs> on that. Um, I created a very classic thing here to to uh, connect to me. This is just my email address, and I I made it like that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, okay, leave it up there for one second. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna last. ask you to send it to me, but okay. Lars.coach. All right. I love it. That's easy. Lars. Just, Lars just as simple as that. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so, then you will you will keep them informed as to what's going on and what new yes. pictures you got going. And, yeah. and I will 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 build a little bit more of an information system. I'm not the guy who is too um um diligent about creating newsletters or something like that, but, but uh yeah. When I know people, I will inform people. Okay. Well, this is, I, I want to do Lars Newman part two, because I got a feeling you have more things going on, but we are out of time, believe it or not. So I know how quickly did this go? So please keep doing what you're doing. It's so exciting. And I'm, I'm going to join your email list and find out what's going on because this is so innovative. Lars, thank you so much for being a guest on the coaching game. This has been totally fascinating. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you for having me again. It was really fun. It Thank was. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Yes. laughs>